only hope when hope was all but gone A second chance to sing a brand new song You opened up my eyes to see You rescued me, rescued me You showed the way when there was no way out Cleared up my mind when you Good afternoon, boys and girls. Welcome to uh, Children's Church today. We're glad you're tuning in and, uh, and listening to us today and watching. So today we have a lesson for you on how Jesus is the light of the world. We're going to do a series of messages here, preparing our hearts to celebrate Christmas and, uh, and that Jesus came into this world and he was fully, fully man, fully God. And uh, just, uh, just talking about how he is, gives us light. We are to share that light with others. So let's uh, open today in a word of prayer and uh, have some worship as well. So uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are the light of the world and you have shined your light into the darkness of our hearts and souls and into this dark world. And we pray, Lord, that today's uh, service would glorify you and you bless the worship and the teaching of your word. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, stand up. Get ready to worship. We kick it old school. 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 Come on, come on, don't miss the latest craze. Hit it for a minute, then it's on to the next phase. Easy come, easy go, the marketers will hack it. The only change that comes winds up in a pocket. Up on the wagon, try the hip thing. All the while we're missing all the joy that God can bring. You can take the new stuff, you can keep the fluff. The Bible is our tool and we're here to kick it old school. Here we go, you know we're going retro. We're cool as a rule, yeah, we kick it old school. Emerging like a moldy piece of bread We act as if the holy word of God is all but dead All we need to know is right there on the pages Why are we obsessed with who the guy on stage is? Dance the hottest dance, get the latest buzzy You're gonna find out Jesus wasn't very fuzzy, was he? You can take the new stuff, you can keep the flow The Bible is our tool and we're here to keep it old school. Here we go, you know we're going red patrol. We're cool as a rule, yeah, we kick it old school. We kick it old school. We kick it old school. Okay, everybody, show me your best robot. We kick it old school. We kick it old school. If you believe the Bible's true, you're kicking it old school. And life's not all about you. You're kicking it old school. If you know 
you're in a bad spot. You're kicking it old school. And you need the grace of God's God. You're kicking it old school. You're ready to God on your knees. You're kicking it old school. You make no apology. For kicking it old school. There's one more thing to say. If you're kicking it old school. Jesus is the only way.
Welcome back, boys and girls and families watching today. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that, the worship and the teaching um, that we're about ready to get into. I hope these, I hope these are a blessing to you, uh, that, uh, uh, that you look forward to them, and maybe you're getting something out of them each week, in the, those weeks that you watch. So last week we talked about the importance of giving thanks, um, and how having a gr- heart of gratitude rather than grumbling prepares our hearts to be in God's presence and to hear His voice in our lives and have sweet fellowship with Him. And so we looked at uh, Psalm 100 and how we are to enter his courts with gladness and into his presence, you know, with praise. And so um, hopefully you're still practicing that. I encourage you to make uh, giving the Lord thanks uh, a regular part of your devotional life, your time of uh, prayer, time of praise to him at home. That we're, you just have a heart of uh, gratitude and praise because it really does uh, position you, your life to uh, to hear from him and to, to connect with him in sweet ways. So. Today we're going to have a lesson for you on how uh, Jesus is the light of the world. So before we dive into that, let's pray again. So, Lord, I pray you'd help uh, the boys and girls watching, Lord, to understand this concept, Lord, that you are the light of the world, that we have light in this world because you are light, um, and Lord, you are good. Um, and Lord, we love you so much. I pray, God, that you would shine your light into the boys' hearts and lives, that they'd understand um, uh, and uh that you are the light of the world, and you want us to share that light with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to start off in Matthew 4, uh, 16 and 17. This is a great verse. Um, so Matthew 4, 16 and 17, it says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this is referring to Jesus' earthly ministry. That when Jesus began his ministry on earth, light began began to shine into the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, who had a heart to receive uh, the truth of God's word and and his scriptures. So it says here, those who sat in darkness. You know, the idea of sitting is that they're very comfortable in their darkness. There are those in this world who are very, very complacent and very comfortable with living in darkness, maybe living in their sin, living in disobedience to God, even rebellion against him. Uh, they're very comfortable in that place. And, but God is so kind in his goodness. He shines his, his great light into the dark hearts and souls of men and women, boys and girls, and into just the culture, even in Jesus' time, that was very dark. And even our culture today, there's a darkness within our culture uh, that's growing even stronger. 
and Jesus can still shine his light uh, into the dark cultures and the dark hearts of this world. And it says, and they sat in the region in the shadow of death. It does seem that darkness and, uh, and death go together, while light and, uh, and love um, and light go together. And it says, and, and, and then from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. A part of receiving the light that God wants to give you and each, and each person in this world is an act of repentance. It's a turning away from our sins, a turning away from our lawlessness, uh, our lawless deeds, the things that we do that are wrong, uh, our disobedience to God. It's turning away from those and turning to the light, uh, turning to, to God's kingdom. And Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand there in verse, verse 17, because wherever Christ is, his kingdom is present because he is the king of heaven. He is the king of earth. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So now we're going to look at a few more verses that where it just talk, it talks about how Jesus is, is the light. So in John, uh, John chapter 1, verses uh, 4 and 5, it says, In him was light. I'm sorry, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. So in Jesus is life. Uh, we, we have life as people because, uh, because God breathed his life into our nostrils, into people. He, he breathed his, his life into Adam, and Adam became a living being. So we have life today because it was given to us by God. And then it says, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. It's a very interesting uh, passage there. Not to go too deep, but light has a, the tendency to, to push into the darkness. And sometimes those who are sitting in darkness or are so comfortable in the darkness, uh, they don't want the light on them because anybody exposes things that, that they don't want exposed. Uh, sin, it could be a sin in their life or, or worldviews that are contrary to God's word, and they don't want to turn from those things. And so they, they, they choose, they're willfully, they choose not to understand it not to receive the light. But we don't want to be those people. We want to embrace God's light. In fact, we want to enter his light. Uh, Jesus says, come unto me. Many times in the New Testament, he invites us to come to him. Uh, and, and when we come to him, we're going to get closer to the light. And sometimes that means conviction will come into our lives because we'll, we'll realize there's things in our lives that are wrong and we need to ask God to forgive us of those things. But as we walk in obedience to him, we'll have greater and greater light in our lives and understanding and revelation of God. All right, so this says in John, uh, John chapter 8, verse 12, it says this, Then Jesus said to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Hmm. It's interesting that it seems like life and light are correlated together. They're, they're connected. That life and light and even love, we'll see later, are all connected together. So Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So we have light in this world because Christ is light. Uh, if you think back to uh, the book of Genesis, right? Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, before God created the sun, before he created the moon and the stars, there was already light here. But where did that light come from? It came from God himself. That Jesus is light. And if you go all the way into the book of Revelation, the last two chapters of the Bible, it describes New Jerusalem and describes what it's going to be like there in detail. And it's amazing. Which, you know, basically, it's going to be heaven, right? And in heaven, eventually, there's going to be no need for the sun, and no need for the moon or the stars, because God himself illuminates heaven with his glory and his, and his, uh, and his light. It's this uh, illuminating light that just shines from his glory and it fills all of heaven. So there's no need for sun or moon or stars. And, and, and the Lord himself wants to be the light that gives life. In fact, if it wasn't for our sun that God created, you know, the, the sun in our universe here, if he did not create that sun, uh, we wouldn't have life on this planet. In fact, the sun is at the perfect distance and the earth is at a perfect angle that life can exist on this planet. And so light and life are connected in a physical sense and also in a spiritual sense. And then in John uh, 9, verse 5, it says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So Jesus is the light of this world, and he gives light to those who follow him. 
And as we choose to follow Jesus and his truth, then we no longer walk in darkness. In fact, we're walking away from the darkness. And we have the light of life. So as a follower of Jesus, as we walk with Jesus and obey his teachings and his word, then we have more and more life and light in our lives and should have less and less darkness in our life. So, boys and girls, what when we talk about light, the light from God, that he's the light of the world, uh, and that we have more light in our lives and more life, what does that mean? Well, it means that when we, what we mean by light is understanding God, understanding his word, understanding his ways, understanding his character, uh, his attributes. So the more that we walk in obedience to the teachings of Scripture, and the more that we have fellowship with Jesus through a personal relationship, we're going to have more light, more revelation, more understanding of him and his ways and his, and his will in our lives. But I find that it's a daily process, that we don't get all this information about him all at once. It's, a, it's an ongoing learning process about who God is and uh, what he wants uh, from us and what he wants in our lives personally. And, and yet, uh, darkness seems to be a lack of understanding of, God's, uh, of God and his ways and his will in our lives. Uh, darkness also is under, a misunderstanding of his character. Some people think that, that God is angry at mankind and that God's wrathful and, and that he doesn't love people, but he does love people. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, have everlasting life. Understanding God's character is a big part of having light in your life. So as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, uh, and this next few messages tonight, or the, sorry, this morning's message, and uh, the next few messages are all going to be about preparing our hearts for the birth of Christ and, and looking at this Advent season and looking at Christmas, which is, which is awesome. I love Christmas personally. I love celebrating uh, God coming into this world as a baby. So, uh, but as we do that, we want to uh, see that Jesus is the light of the world and allow his light to just so fill our hearts and our life that we can share that love and that light with others during this season. Uh, and so uh, let's go to one more passage. If you have, have your Bibles there, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 13. And we're going to read through verses 13 and 16. So Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Many of you probably are very familiar with these verses. So it says, You are the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is good for, it is good for nothing but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor, nor, the, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus is the light of the world, and those who are his followers also become a light become an example. So a Christian means a little Christ or Christ, someone who's Christ-like or a Christ follower. And we are to reflect. It's almost as if Christ shines his light into our hearts and then we reflect that light out to the world, to others. Um, it's not just for us to enjoy uh, knowing God and understanding his word, understanding his ways. It's not just for us to enjoy it, but also for us to share that with others. Um, because it says here that we are the light of the world. And it says, so then, it says, so then let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So whatever light that God has given us, understanding of him, whatever we understand about God, we are to share about others. We are to share that with others through what, what we practically do by our good works, by how we live our lives, speak so loud about God's light and his love in our lives and also his love for others as well and that we are to glorify God through, uh, through our lives. And, and that shines his light into this dark world that we live in. So, and then last thing I want to encourage you that maybe all of this is, is new to you. You're listening today and this idea of light, this idea of, of, of life and love are all co correlated together, all connected. That's a new idea to you. And please understand, it's not through uh, just simply uh, believing creeds or doctrines in, in the Bible it's not through religion. It's through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That uh, having light in our lives and love from God and true joy 
uh, all come from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself. Because he is the savior of the world. And, uh, and he has life and light within himself. Therefore, he can freely give it to anyone he chooses. But he invites us to come into the light. We might have fellowship with him and no longer walk in darkness. So as we prepare our hearts for this uh, holiday season, I would encourage you first to receive his light and his, and his life and his love into your hearts. And then also to be mindful to share that light with others, that, that love, his word with others. You can simply by saying, you know, Merry Christmas when you're out shopping or uh, sending, um, you know, letters out to your family that, that, that share the gospel or to friends. Uh, I said, it does seem like there's a lot more Christmas lights out this year, at least here where I live in Indianapolis. Uh, there seems to be a lot more Christmas lights out earlier and more of them. And I think it's just been a hard year for people and people want to see more light in this world uh, in a physical sense. And I, I seem to think there's a lot more Christmas lights out and that's great and I love it. Uh, I love seeing the city uh, lit up with lights. And so, but let us, light, let us shine our light during this season because a lot of people uh, need to hear and see the light of Christ in our lives. So let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are the light of the world and that you have shined your light into our hearts. And Lord, that we would share that with others. And if someone's watching today, Lord, and they, they don't know you personally, they don't have uh, your light in their life, Lord, that they would cry out to you um, and repent and, and turn to you with all their heart, believing that you are, uh, that you are the King of kings, Lord of lords. And Lord, that, that, that they too would have your light in their life. We pray, Lord, that you would work in this way, in a, in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next week. God bless.